As of late, I've been obsessed with Marvelous Designer. I knew it was fun to begin with, but I couldn't believe how easy it was to get into Marvelous. But the process to get Marvelous Designer and Houdini to work together wasn't as smooth of a process as I thought it would be. It wasn't too bad. It took about a day to get all the little things working with the countless attempts of trial and error, but I think I got it down to a part where I can finally integrate Marvelous Designer into my Houdini workflow. I'll be using this mannequin character from my character generator HDA that most of you have already seen in the past in a lot of my crowd agent Houdini tutorials. This is the fully rigged character that is generated by my HDA. It's already hooked up to the walking animation from Houdini's built-in mocaps. I'm not going over how to rig the character or how to retarget the character rig to the walk animation because that was already covered in a lot of my previous tutorial videos in the Crowds miniseries and KinFX miniseries and even in some of my really older live stream videos. The focus of this video is to demonstrate how to get clothing generated assets from Marvelous Designer into Houdini's Vellum system and simulate realistic clothing animations. So it's getting that workflow from Marvelous Designer to Houdini. Okay, let's start off with getting a character out of Houdini and into Marvelous Designer because this is what we're going to need in order to build the clothing designed specifically for this character. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit him. You'll be more familiar with this. This is the ca my character generator. Uh, it'll give you this generated a mannequin asset, which is fully rigged. There is something new in here. So I've added a small feature to convert some of the bones, all, all the bone names from my own bone naming system into Unreal Engine compatible bone naming system. So let's take a look at here my existing bone names are called. The main difference is mostly the fingers and the rest are quite similar. Like you'll see spine one, spine two, Unreal Engine has spine underscore zero one, spine underscore zero two. So once you check this, give it a, a while, and then you can see all the bone names will be converted into an Unreal Engine naming system. So this will make it a little easier to export animations. Doesn't affect what we're doing today, but this is nice to have if you're using this character in a mocap or or anything motion capture device that most likely will support the unreal engine mannequin bone naming system so this is where it comes in handy if you wanted to use my mannequin character so this will generate the mannequin and then i have it hooked up to this man uh walking animation so this is generated if you go up here into the toolbar into if you click this, it'll generate this walking mocap asset into your viewport, into your object level. And then if you come over here, you can choose the animation you want. So you can choose walk. They have a number of them. The one that we're going to use is walk because it's nice and simple and create those wrinkles that I want to create in vellum. Now let's go back into the character generator. I had that walking animation hooked up to this mannequin character. And I'm just going to show it to you. I'm just going to bypass. It's actually not in that one. The animation, I have it hooked up here. This is the walking one that I wanted to show you. It's a motion clip. It's turned into a motion clip because it was used in the previous crowd systems and the crowd agents needed a motion clip. But as you can see here, there are three outputs. The third output gives you a preview of the animation. So I'm just going to make this go up, put this down. So this is just a quick way for me to hook things up. And if you look carefully in the bone naming system, it's using the same bone naming structure that I've used in my mannequin character. Just because this HDA here that I'll provide for my perk members automatically retargets built-in mocap animation to my mannequin character. So that's just convenient. Over here on the shelf tool, there's mocap one, two, and three. So there's three different types. I do have uh, different HDAs for each one. I don't think I have one for the third one. It is written in the tooltip, so that hopefully that clarifies things. Okay, so the tweaks that I've done here is just to unify the size. So it matches the size of the clothing. Now the clothing was generated first Right now, you see the clothing already imported just because I, I have it generated now. It's coming from Marvelous Designer. There's an explanation for that. Why do you have to align the size? Because once you export your character from Houdini and put it into Marvelous Designer and then generate clothing based on that same character size and export it out, it's still a different size. It comes out as a different size because 
Houdini and Marv's designer have different units. Houdini has Houdini units, which is in meters. It's known to be in meters. Marv's designer uses centimeters and millimeters. It kind of thinks when you import something from Marv's designer, it thinks it's in the number that's coming in. It thinks it's in meters, but really it's in centimeters. So it blows up super big. So you do have to like adjust the size just a bit just to make it. You can eyeball this. It's not too big of a deal. So you can see that I'm eyeballing it with the control. That's uh, the control one that I've told you about in the past in the previous crowd um, tutorials. That is like bone that controls the size of the entire character and the main position of the character. Anyways, that's beyond a little, a little beyond this uh, video. I don't want to get too deep into it. Align the size, you'll be fine. To export the character out, this is what I'm going to be using. You drop down and drop FBX character output. This is the node that you need. Well, the first input, it's looking for the rest geometry, which is just the mesh, which is just this mesh with weights though. It has to be binded to the skeleton. So if you look in the geometry spreadsheet, this guy actually has weights. So you'll see these bone capture weights. And these are the weights that bind this mannequin geometry to the skeleton. And it tells how to deform this character based on whatever you do to the skeleton. So that's important. The second input into the ROP node to export our character out of Houdini is the rest pose of the skeleton. This would be the second output coming from my character generator, which is the T pose rest position of the skeleton of our rigged character. Uh, this is important because I find that it does affect Marvelous. I do suspect that Marvelous understands the rig and skeleton of the character. Later on, I'll show you how to pose the characters in Marvelous and export an animation from Houdini into Marvelous in order to simulate the clothing wrinkles in Marvelous. The last input for the FBX ROP node, I'm going to feed in the same skeleton node that's coming out of my generator because I'm not exporting an animation. I'm only concerned about getting the character into Marvelous Designer and get a model to create the custom clothing for our character. So the T-Pose will do, will do just fine. The animation is something we'll explore later on. So I'm using the, the default parameters given to me by the, the ROP FBX. The only change I believe I made was to render the current frame because this is just the resting position that I want to get into Marvelous Designer and then feed in the output file and then just click save to disk and just render it up. Now I've called this the mannequin rest pose. So if we look over here, that would be this. So we're gonna import, go to file, import FBX object and rest pose. Now here you want an avatar. I'm, I'm just going to basically have these default. The only thing that I unchecked was this. So this comes checked by default, but since my character is not in any Marvelous Designer compatible bone naming systems, or the rig isn't actually compatible in, in a way that Marvelous Designer would understand it, checking this does not do anything. It doesn't help. The only thing you need to be aware of is this unit system. So let's just use the default millimeters and see what happens. Cause I want to show you, to show you what it looks like. And you'll get, it's not in this T pose. It's not in A pose. It's actually in a T pose, but it doesn't know about it because it doesn't understand the rig. Oh, that actually looked not that bad. So let's just try that one more time. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it's not properly imported. So I'm going to choose centimeters. And this, it's blown up so large that it's even larger than the grid. This is what I want to show you. Make the mesh. Okay, there we go. Let me zoom in. So, so that's the grid right there. And it's, the mannequin is huge. It's, it's bigger than the grid. This will cause some issues just because it looks, well, it looks awkward and you won't be able to see the grid. So you won't be able to see the X, Y, Z axes. It, it's inconvenient. Like I wouldn't, if you see this, I would try to make it a little smaller. So at least it fits on the grid. Nothing good can come out of this, put it that way. So let's give this a try again. Got to import FBX. So we're rest and this rest pose is what came out of our Houdini. And I'm going to change this back to millimeters. Okay, millimeters. Again, uh, it doesn't recognize the A-pose, it's fine. Okay, let's turn back the mesh. Turn that back in. So this, the mesh, you wanna see like uh, a wireframe or you want a textured surface. 
In the next video, I'll continue with the Marvelous Designer 2 Houdini workflow, and I'll demonstrate how to pose your characters in Marvelous Designer. We'll be animating this mannequin in Houdini and export that pose transition as an animation into Marvelous. This way you can use Marvelous to simulate your clothing wrinkles in a different pose. Don't worry, we're still going to simulate clothing using Houdini's Vellum Solver, but I thought it was important to go over how to simulate in Marvelous Designer as well, just in case you ever needed to pose your character and make adjustments to the clothing according to the pose and making clothing adjustments are best done in marvelous itself thanks for watching and sticking to the end